So we're very pleased in this one, the 202nd Earth to Class to welcome Paul Olson, talk about recent advances in understanding dinosaurs. Paul is the Arthur D. Stoke Memorial Professor at Lamont Dougherty in Columbia University. I should have given you a photograph from this century. No, this is the one I know. <laughs> and uh, Paul's been interested in dinosaurs since he was a kid. Renee, just for your information, dinosaurs are older than I am. I'm glad she's muted. I don't know why. I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> well, the first dinosaurs are known from about 230 million years ago. I only go back to 200 million years ago in the Triassic period. <coughs> and humans and dinosaurs did not coexist, contrary to what you learned as a child. Sorry to destroy your childhood dreams. But some childhood dreams do come true. When Paul was 14, Livingston in Livingston, New Jersey area, he found footprints in a famous quarry. And he and his friend made a cast of it. They sent it to President Nixon, got commendations for their work. And Riker Hill fossil site is now a national natural landmark. Since people and dinosaurs did not live at the same time, you don't have to be as worried about what happens in Jurassic Park. Getting down to the serious part, there are two major groups of dinosaurs, which are called Saurischians and Ornithischians. Has to do with the shape of the hips. The Saurischians have lizard-like hips and the Ornithischians have bird-like hips. The first dinosaur bone was discovered in 1677 by Robert Plott, who was one of the most famous scientists of Great Britain at the time. And in 1815, the Oxford professor named William Buckland discovered a dinosaur, although the word dinosaur had not yet been invented. One of the most famous discoverers of dinosaurs was Mary Ann Mantell, wife of geologist Gideon Mantell. She discovered bones which were identified as iguanodon. And then in 1842, Sir Richard Owen uh, named these organisms dinosaurs. New Jersey, where Paul and I are from, is famous for its dinosaurs. One of the earliest dinosaurs in the United States was discovered in New Jersey. And it's called the Hadrosaurus. It was a plant eater. And it was described in 1858. Became the first fully mounted dinosaur. If you want to see it, it's in the Philadelphia Museum of Natural History. We do have some dinosaurs in the New York area. There dinosaurs, which are crocodile-like. In 1910, a Columbia geology class was hiking along the shore of the Hudson River in Edgewater, about half a mile south from where the George Washington Bridge was built 20 years later. And they found these bones, which are now in the Museum of Natural History. For many years, they were displayed as the Fort Lee Phytosaur. But uh, turns out they were misidentified. They have a better display now. But in the area of Rockland County, Paul and others have been able to find footprints of various types of early dinosaurs. He sent me these pictures. As many of you know, in the late 19th century, many dinosaur fossils were discovered in the American West. And two rival collectors, Edward Drinker Cope of the Academy of Natural Sciences of Philadelphia and Othniel Charles Marsh of the Peabody Museum of Natural History at Yale. And I use the word ruthlessly, literally. 
They robbed, they murdered their rivals to be the first on the scene in the Bone Wars, as they were called. But they discovered many, many samples and uh, sometimes their science was faulty. Colports mounted an entire dinosaur with the vertebrae backwards, placed the head on the tail. And I put on the uh, slideshow, which is available to you on the website, um, a lot of links so that you can see some videos, which will give you a lot more information. Hope after the talk, you'll go to some of these links. At the American Museum of Natural History, we have two large halls, as most of you know, which have uh, the Thoricians and Ornithischian dinosaurs. Used to have them mounted as the early and late dinosaurs, but now they've got it in terms of tax, uh, taxonomy. So I'm assuming that every one of you in the New York area has been to the Museum of Natural History. These are some of the Sorishians. And these are some of the Ornithischians. On the left is the dinosaur mummy. In 1920, the American Museum of Natural History under the leadership of Roy Chapman Andrews, one of the most famous scientists of the time, went to the Gobi Desert to collect dinosaur fossils. And I hope you look at the videos about Roy Chapman Andrews, very interesting person. So please click on these links. And one of the things he discovered almost by accident was a nest of dinosaur eggs. They were just about the end of their season and they had gotten lost in Mongolia and uh, they had stopped to ask directions which I realize is not the usual thing for any group of uh, male scientists. And one of their camera persons walked over to the edge of the cliff and started to go down. And as he went down, he found lots of bones. And that's where they excavated the dinosaur eggs from. One of the largest dinosaurs is Titanosaur. In 2016, the museum erected a replica. The original bones would have been too heavy. It's by the 77th Street elevators. And uh, if you come out and start your tour at that point, as you walk out, you'll be walking right underneath the Titanosaur. We have a lot of things which we think of as dinosaurs, but which are not dinosaurs, including nucleosaurs, plesiosaurs, and mosasaurs, pteranodons, pteranodactyls, and other flying reptiles. Mammoths and mastodons are not dinosaurs. But we do have living dinosaurs, and they are birds. And if you can unmute yourselves now, I'm going to give you about five minutes to share some of your memories of dinosaurs. Anybody can jump in. Five minutes, um, not enough time for me. Well, talk fast. You're a New Yorker. <clears throat> Okay, my sister invited a friend of hers when she was in the ninth grade to come to her house to study because her sister could teach her about dinosaurs because her sister knows everything about dinosaurs. And she said, great, how old is your sister? And she's, my sister said, four. Yeah. And there's the rest is history. Um. Go on. Hello, uh, I'm Jay Arkindasta from Connecticut. Um, and uh, we have a pretty impressive trackway of uh, Ubrontes dinosaurs in Connecticut. 
uh, was discovered in the 60s in uh, Rocky Hill, Connecticut, when they were excavating for, um, I think it was like a state hospital. And the bulldozer operator noticed the footprints in kind of the shale rock there. And uh, they called Wesley in and those guys went over and looked at it. And uh, as I say, the rest is history. They have a nice state park there uh, where they've got the tracks preserved and they've created some negatives so that you can bring your own plaster of Paris to make your own molds uh, of uh, dinosaur footprints, which is a fun trip uh, you know, for anybody on a summer afternoon. Um, I could go. When I was when I was six, uh, my father had a sabbatical, and we went and lived in um, London for the year. And my father had a lot more time on his hands, and so he took my sister and me to the Museum of Natural History there in London. And um, I'd always loved to draw. He bought my sister and I each a special set of, of colored pencils to only use at the museum, and. I would sit and draw dinosaurs. Um, and I uh, remember getting like a crowd of, of people around and also, um, and also gems and minerals. So it, it was an early sign that I'd end up going into, I don't know, art and science. Good. Jessica, have you ever been to the Museum of Natural History? Why, yes, I have. I. I got my master's there uh, in uh, earth science education, as you know. So know. yes, Dr. Passau is one of my teachers. A bunch of you can say that. Others? Um, when I was in elementary school, I used to dig up rocks and I, for I genuinely forgot if I actually thought that I was finding fossils or if I was just pretending to, but every little rock I found, I thought <laughs> was a dinosaur tooth. And I, I convinced myself that that was true. Actually, a very similar thing happened to me when I was probably about 12 or 13, maybe 13. I um, thought I found a dinosaur footprint in the right kind of rock, by the way, red, uh, red uh, siltstone, and I brought it to the Newark Museum. And they kindly explained to me that it wasn't a footprint, but it was uh, the right kind of rock. The next time I thought I'd found a footprint, I had. But they were very encouraging, right. and very, uh, very generous with their time which is, um, I've always found to be the case when I was a, a youngster visiting museums. Well, on this list of uh, videos on this page, towards the bottom, you'll see some about Rowan and Drexel. And you'll see the name Lacavera. Ken Lacavera is a professor who was at Drexel, is now at Rowan. And he got a major gift from the Jane and Rick Edelman Foundation. They're the same people who a few years ago gave the money for the Galileo scopes that some of you have. And uh, in South Jersey, in the township of Mantua, they have found a site which may actually be a KT kill site, but they've had a lot of excavations there and discovered dozens of fossils. So I hope you'll have a chance to look at some of these uh, videos. I've brought field trips there. It's, um, it's a park now, right? Edelman Park, and you have to make reservations to go there, but you can, it's, 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 a, great, it's a great place. It used to be a quarry for green sand and making water softeners. Right, and at this point it's closed officially, but uh, because of COVID, 